Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Tuesday, and today we're gonna to go pretty deep on a question from our comments about our firing pin system. Let me start by saying this will be the third time I've shot this video. And that's because the first two times were long and complicated, and honestly, I'm expecting that to happen again, but I just want you to know that I'm really gonna try to break it down to just sort of what you need to know to understand why we did what we did, but it is gonna be a bit of a history lesson and we are gonna go pretty deep on some stuff. So just prepare yourself for that. There will be some interesting little things in there, uh, some things you're gonna to wanna to see, I think, and then also a surprise little ending about um, something we discovered that uh, Glock did in their Generation 5 gun. So, get ready, strap in, here we go. All right, the question was this. Hey Trevor, I have a, a, a Shadow Systems DR920 and I noticed that there's this weird, I think he used the word voodoo spring in my firing pin assembly. What is that? Uh, why is it there? I've never seen that before. Great question. And you're about to find out why it's there. But in order to do that, we have to back up a little bit and talk about the generation one to four style guns. And I think I'll just show you a couple slides first so you can see what the, uh, the viewer saw and make better sense of the question. Okay. So here we have a uh, generation four style shadow system slide. This one is in the uh, midnight bronze Cerakote, pretty good looking color. And you'll notice that it has a black spacer sleeve right there and it has a rectangular shaped firing pin hole in the breech face, okay? All right, that is a generation kind of one to four style slide. Here we have a DR920 that features kind of the newer design. Uh, this is the one that the viewer was asking about. So here we see now, instead of the black spacer sleeve, we see the, a gray spacer sleeve, and we see a round hole in the slide on the breech face instead of the rectangular one. So maybe you can see it a little better on this one. So there's a round hole in the slide, in the breech face. Just ignore that, sorry. Okay, what the hell did we do? And why is it like that? What are, what are we doing? Okay, let's start with the Gen 1 to 4 style design. The Gen 4 design being what's in a majority of the Shadow Systems pistols that are out there in the world. What is it? Well, one of the things about the Glock style slide in Gen 1 to 4 is, hey, it's got this rectangular hole, like I showed you a minute ago. What's that about? Why is it like that? It's weird, all right? There's not very many guns out there that have anything other than that for the firing pin hole. So why did they do that? Um, well, it's, it's all tied in together with a decision that they made to have their firing pin free moving. I won't claim to say that I know why they started there, but they did. And that means that the firing pin is, when the firing pin safety is released, the firing pin is free to move and do what it wants, okay? Most guns out there, have a return spring that after the round has fired and the firing pin is forward, it springs back. 1911, uh, Browning High Power, M&P, uh, most of the SIG guns, uh, there are others. There are most anything that's got a round firing pin is gonna have a return on it. I guess one exception would be the AR-15. You know, the AR-15, you, you can hear the firing pin going back and forth, it, it's free moving. But for pistols out there, most of them have a return spring. Okay, well Glock decided to have this, this firing pin that could free move. Um, and there's nothing inherently unsafe about that because the firing pin, when it is, uh, when the gun is being, uh, when the breech is closing and picking up a round, when the gun is essentially going through the, the cycle, uh, it, it, the firing pin is pulled to the rear and gets locked behind the firing pin safety. So let me show that really quick. So here's the firing pin safety. The firing pin is forward right now. I'll show you if we pull this out, you'll see that the, it is protruding through the, oops, protruding through the breech face. There it is, there, there it is, you can see it. I'll pull it back, right, okay? So it's through the breech face. As the gun is cocking, it gets pulled back. So it's not unsafe to have it forward because again, when the gun is cocking and a round is going up the uh, ramp, the firing pin is getting yanked to the rear and it is, uh, it's being made safe behind the firing pin safety. Okay, but the free moving firing pin meant there was one little tiny hiccup in the story. If we have a case where the firing pin can be forward, like I showed you a moment ago, see that? 
Well, that means that it's protruding past the breech face as the gun is picking up a round off the magazine. See, it's, it's already picking up a round and it's still, it's still there. Okay, what's up with that? Check it out. The free moving firing pin can remain in the forward position after the gun is dry fired, all right? So what that means is that the breech face is kind of right here. So that rectangular hole I drew a moment ago, the breech face is kind of right there. That's the part that protrudes and strikes the primer. And as the primer, or correction, as the round is going up the ramp, let me do my best to draw a round, right? As the round is going up the ramp, it actually has to slide past that, that face. It has to go up the breech face. See, that's a misconception I think people have sometimes. They think that, you know, the round goes in the chamber and then the, the slide's closing and the extractor grabs the back of the round. And that's not the way it works. Actually, the, the, the back of the cartridge casing is sliding up the breech face as the, the slide is closing. And it, it goes, kind of slides under the extractor. That's how it gets under the extractor. Well, if you have a free moving firing pin that can end up in the forward position, then there's a collision there, right? And we actually get asked about that. So, so people will, will say, hey, you know, I noticed I dry fired my gun and I went to a loaded mag or whatever, and my, my firing pin is forward, you know, is that safe or that's causing a malfunction? It shouldn't be like that. No, it's always been like that. It's always been the case that the firing pin can end up in that, in that situation in a Gen 1 to 4 gun. There's also another little aspect to this problem. It's not a problem, but this story is you've got a firing pin safety that's in there as well. Oops, I, that should be solid. A firing pin safety that's in there as well that lives back around the firing pin in the channel, and it's got a spring that's pushing it down. 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 Okay, spring pushing it down. That means that there's also a little bit of spring pressure and a little added friction right here where the firing pin is in contact with the firing pin safety in this condition with the firing pin forward. So I'll try to show that. I may not be successful, but let me take the top end off. If I have the firing pin forward, okay, it's not free moving, right? The firing pin safety is, is actually touching it, holding it down. See it drop down? I'll show that again. So gun's been fired, the, the, the firing pin is forward, and it's, it's actually just got a little tiny bit of friction from that firing pin safety, applying spring pressure. So that's why the firing pin tip on the Gen 1 to 4 guns is shaped like that. This is just a little tiny baby ramp. It's a little ramp that allows the rim of the casing to slide up and push it out of the way, send it back into the breech face a little bit so that it can, it can slide up the breech face. If it was like a cylinder, right, viewed you know, in cross section, if you had a if you had a, a, a round trying to come up the ramp in this situation, uh, that's a weird rimmed round. I don't know why this one's chambered in 38 Smith and Wesson. So the 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 collision would be would be a stop, okay? Because there wouldn't be a ramp there. It would just come to a stop, and then you would have a, a hitch in your giddy up. But now, if we add this ramp in, then now all of a sudden it can slide up. So so what happened? Let's recap that. Glock had a, chose to do a free moving firing pin that didn't have a return spring. That meant that the firing pin tip could end up forward with the firing pin safety applying a little bit of pressure on it and creating friction. If the firing pin tip is forward as the casing is sliding up the breech face, then we have to have a provision for getting it out of the way, which then creates the, the need for this ramp, uh, which allows the firing pin tip to then get ramped back into the firing pin uh, channel. And so what you end up with is this kind of oddly shaped firing pin and a rectangular breech face. So that's the start point. Now, I wanna make a quick point. This is a wonderful system, okay? I am not saying there's anything wrong with this system at all, at all. You'll find out in a moment that what we did created a fairly modest improvement. It's a, it's a little tiny baby incremental change, okay? We're not reinventing the wheel by any stretch. This is a great system. But, you know, there are things happening in there and considerations that had to be made. All right, so what did we do? Well, let's just start with this. I wanted a round firing pin. I wanted a round firing pin hole and I wanted a round firing pin tip. That's what I wanted. And the reason I wanted that is, is kind of twofold. One is a rectangular breech face hole is kind of a pain. So either you're, you're EDMing it or you're broaching it with little tiny baby tools that want to break like glass. And it's just kind of a pain compared to just drilling a hole. 
which by the way, if you drill a hole, you always end up concentric too, if you have the right design tool for that channel. So you just end up with kind of a higher quality, more concentric, easier to do result if you have a round hole in the gun, uh, in the breech face versus the rectangle. So there were like quality and manufacturing considerations there, but that was really only part of it. What I really wanted was a stronger, better firing pin because I, I would submit that that cylinder is stronger than this kind of little funny blade. You know, I mean, I, look, I get it, it's a great design, it works great, but at the end of the day, it's got two sharp corners or four sharp corners and it's you know kind of taller than it is wide and it's got this kind of narrow cross section and I, I would rather have a cylinder. If it's gonna be subjected to any lateral forces, especially going this direction, I would rather have a cylinder, okay? So stronger firing pin tip. The other thing that I like about this opportunity created by the firing pin uh, being cyl uh, cylindrical is it also afforded us the opportunity to get really creative on the shape of the tip. So, you know, you could have a nice pointy one. I mean, it looks like that one, but this is a circle now. So it's like a spear. You could have one that's like blunt and flat, something in between or whatever. And, and that created opportunity to give a nastier strike to the primer in my opinion, than what we were getting here. So this is a, a, a fairly narrow cross section and it's pretty pointy, okay? There is a kind of a threshold amount of cr uh, primer crush you need in terms of like the depth of the crater. There's a certain amount you kind of need to consistently ignite primers, but after that, what you want is coverage, right? So if you have a you know off-center strike or if you have a little bit of priming compound that's kind of absent from one side of the anvil and the primer, uh, you know, it's nice to have just a bigger, nastier hit and having a round firing pin enabled us to have a, a pretty large strike on the back of the casing that was still sufficiently deep to, uh, to, to ignite the primer, okay? I said strike in the back of the casing, strike in the back of the primer um, to, to ignite it. Okay, so a better overall system, or a better overall firing pin, I think, is round, better, simpler, more high quality, more likely to be concentric in the manufacturing, round, stronger, and uh, bigger cross-section, bigger hit. The pointy ones up here, they tend to, you'll maybe have more pierced primers and stuff like that. This is just, to me, better, okay? So if we wanted to have that though, if we wanted to create this, this new design, we had to have a provision for getting the firing pin back, because I'll go back to my statement earlier. If the firing pin was actually shaped like shaped like this and flat on the bottom, then that rim would hit it and come to a, a screeching halt. Right, so so we we needed to have a provision to get the hit and then send it home, and and so that's why there's that additional spring. So on the firing pin assembly itself, you have the the uh, the main spring that is actually driving the whole the whole uh, striker forward, and then you also have that little tiny baby spring. So let me just disassemble this really quick, and we will look at that. So. We have our, our, our main spring, we have the, the actual firing pin spring or striker spring as it's called. And then you'll see there's a little baby spring in there too. Boop, and it, that's, that is what is returning the spring back to its start point. Okay, so um, it strikes and it returns and therefore it is always locked behind the safety. It's never in this funny forward position. It can never impede your uh, chambering. Not that this is a problem, but it's just not ideal. So. We're getting it out of the way, and that's what that's about. Now, here's the part in the conversation where somebody says, hey, but the Gen 5 is a round firing pin. Um, actually, it's not. It's not a round firing pin. So let me show you really quick what they did there. So the Gen 5 firing pin, by the way, I think is a, is a good firing pin. I think it's a better design, but it's still got the same ramp. It's still free moving, and so if you look at it in cross section, it's not a circle, it's like a, it's like a teardrop, okay? Um, and the firing pin tip is actually, people think it's shaped like this, but it's actually shaped like this. There's a little tiny flat on that front that is a ramp just like that one. So if the, if the casing is coming up, it is, it is not hitting a flat surface like it would be on this side over here, it's hitting that little tiny ramp to kiss it out of the way on the way up the breech face, okay? So they, they actually did the same, the same thing that they had done prior, okay? But they added one additional little weird feature that I wanted to show you 
that was done to address this other thing I mentioned where the firing pin safety is pushing down on the striker. Because remember, we're, we're overcoming just the weight of the pin when the breech, uh, when the, the round is coming up, but we're also overcoming a little bit of friction from that uh, firing pin safety pushing on the top of the firing pin. All right, well, let me let me demonstrate this for you because it's pretty weird the first time you see it. When, when we saw it, we're like, whoa, what is going on? And then it all made sense. All right, here is a Generation 4 style operating system, Shadow Systems MR920 pistol. The firing pin is in the forward position right now. No, I lied. Yeah. The firing pin is in the forward position right now. And if I lift it up and pull it back, it'll lock and it'll stay locked. Can't hear it really moving at all, right? And so it's locked and then the gun goes into battery and bang, you're off to the races. Generation five pistol, right? Check this out. I'm gonna lock that firing pin to the rear. So, firing pin, locked. I'm gonna move the slide back a little bit, just a little bit. Firing pin, still locked. A little bit more, still locked. A little bit more, right about here is where we're picking up around. It's unlocked, right? Let me show you that one more time, okay? Firing pin's locked, so we'll pull it back a little bit. I'm gonna just kinda lock it up, okay? So, firing pin's locked, just like the Gen 4 was a minute ago, right? Still locked. But if I go back far enough, what was that? It's unlocked. What did they do? Well, they said, you know what? We would like to deactivate the firing pin safety at the moment the breach is closing and picking up the round because that way we've pushed this thing out of the way and it's not adding any more friction to this. So we've, we've still got the same tip like we did before with a ramp on it, but firing pin safety is no longer part of the equation. What did they do? Well, I don't even know what you would call this thing. So in the middle of the trigger housing, there's a, a plastic ramp, okay? You, you'll see this only on the Generation 5 style guns, okay? So yes, you have the ejector here and you have the, the housing and then, then you have this funny little ramp. If you look at a Generation 4 style, this is a DR920, we just have the conventional kind of one to four style trigger housing. Well, what they were doing there is creating a little protrusion to lift up on the firing pin safety as the slide is at the rear. So the firing pin safety is right there. We've, been, we've seen that a few times now. As the slide is coming back, right, during cycling, right, at a certain point, that little ramp lifts up on the firing pin safety and unlocks the firing pin so that as it's coming forward and it's picking up the round, it's not providing downward pressure. Shortly after that, as soon as the, the, the casing is past that breech face hole, the firing pin safety is released, it's reactivated, and everything's perfect. So that's what they did. They actually did something in the Gen 5 that was, it was an attempt to, or was, it was, a, a means to remove that friction, uh, you know, on the firing pin in a forward position. Um, now, we are 18 minutes in, so I'm just going to say it. None of this is that big of a deal. Okay, I, you know, sometimes we hesitate to talk about innovation because then people will have a perception that the gun they had before is, you know, has issues or something like that. And that is, that is absolutely not the case. So this is the operating system that is in most of the pistols that are out in the market for shadow systems, that is. So most shadow systems pistols operate this way. Our reputation is built on our version of this operating system. So I don't want anybody to think that this, there's anything wrong with this. The gun that I carry every day is an MR920L that's built like this, okay? It's an older one, it's just the gun I have. So I don't make any distinction personally in terms of like the practical reliability between the two systems. I mean, to be honest with you, this little pushing the casing or pushing the firing pin out of the way thing that we decided to get rid of with that rebound spring, I mean, a lot of that was just because we were getting so many questions and people were like, hey, I just noticed this, I think something's wrong. Rather than say, no, they're all like that, that's how it works. As part of our solution here, we just cleared it out of the way so it never happens again. And, uh, you know, in terms of like the improvements to the firing pin, uh, you know, as, as far as reliability and strength and stuff, I mean, is it stronger? Uh, yes, I believe it's stronger, but some of that strength, I mean, it was just getting kind of academic at that point because they're both strong and they're both really good, okay? so. That is what we did, that is why we did it, and um, that's why I've taken so long to try to explain it because it's just, there's a, kind of a lot that went into it. So next week we'll look at guns that blew up or are broken or something kind of low stress and less nerdy, and uh, I guess I will see you then. Thanks guys, bye.